Thank you, uh, Mayor Chu. I think that was a truly inspiring speech. I think at the center for livable cities, we, we believe the key to livable and sustainable cities is governance. And I think this is very amply demonstrated by, by Mayor Chu this morning. And I think he went straight to the heart of the, the theme of uh, this morning, future of urban living. And you know, it's, it's quite interesting the way he kind of didn't want to talk about the obvious, the hardware, the metro, the roads, the bridges, the smart city initiatives, the environmental initiatives, and we know that in Taipei and New Taipei City, you have a lot of those that I think many cities are also envious of, but you chose instead to focus on, on the hardware, you know, on a, on a big problem that confronts many cities, especially including especially Singapore, where our birth rate is only 1.2, and so we, we do have the, the same issues of, of uh, you know, encouraging more babies. And uh, I think your, your, your idea of uh, the golden shovel, <laughs> or uh, Kim, Kim, Se, Kim, Se Kia, Kim Se Kia, right? <laughs> In Hokkien, I think it's a wonderful idea, which uh, I think Suhun is really taking notes to pass on to <laughs> the relevant pump sec or minister. <laughs> Okay, so I think with that very, very uh, inspiring and, and uh, you know, enjoyable uh, talk by Mia Chu, may I now open the floor for, for questions? We have time for a few questions uh, before the break, so. Okay, yes, Jeff. There's a mic coming to you, yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, Hongbao for babies, is there a high-end limit on how many? Is there a limit on how much Hongbao per baby? Number of babies? Is there a limit? <laughs> I think, w w is it a limit for baby? Uh, I, I'm merely joking. For I know, I know. So uh, we have the limit for baby, at least the three. There we go. There we go. <laughs> it's so a my, joke as well. My, so my serious question is: uh, one of the other factors in uh, in many countries that I hear and read about is also on the employer side mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, people having children and their ability to walk away from work and come back into the workforce. Sometime soon, sometimes a couple years later, is is that a factor uh, in your city? Yes, it did. It, it does uh, factor to uh, to impact to influence of the will to have a baby, and uh, I think we are doing the same thing. Maybe in your country, we are doing the same thing to encourage those those company, those big uh, factory to have their preschool, kindergartens, inside the, inside the factory or inside the company. It's a certain kind of service to the, to the employers. Uh, you may say some employer may have a different idea. They don't want the, 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 the mother or the, the, the parents to, to have the baby, then it may influence their, their job. But uh, I think in Taiwan, gradually, we can accept and uh, everybody happy to have a baby, yeah. Thank you. Yes, Su Hun. <laughs> Su Hun, you try to get a golden shelf <laughs> well, from me. Well, me too. Thank you very much for this uh, most interesting talk. I, I like the fact that, you know, the topics on future of urban living, but you remind us very quickly that there is no future without people. Mm -hmm. And you rightly emphasize that we really need to think about the next generation. Yeah. My question is really about the various schemes that you have put in place. Lawrence and I were in the Ministry of Community Development, uh, Youth and Sports many years back. I think it was in around 2000, early 2000, when Lawrence Lian was the one who uh, came up with the idea of having Hong Pao for uh, Singapore couples who have children. And uh, we have tried, but without very much success to get Singaporeans to have babies. The only thing we don't have today is your golden shovel. So maybe that will do the trick. My question is, how are the Taiwanese different from Singaporeans in responding to all these schemes? I mean, as I say, we have tried various things and they don't seem to work. So I'm very curious to know what, what have you done? You know, what's, what's the magic that you've got in Taiwan that can you know, make these schemes effective? 
I don't know whether the, uh, the golden shower is it does help, but I said, which means every government, including us, we should try all our best, try to help the younger generation, including uh, physically and psychologically. Uh, you know, if for the younger generation they fail to have a baby, they fail to have baby because of uh, the the cost, the time, and the the environment, it may be more difficult to have more baby. So that's the reason why I said uh, we give the subsidy, financial subsidies, all we can, but we need a safe environment uh, with a professional daycare. Uh, they can go to work, and some, for example, this center near to the metro station, you can bring your kid just uh, to the daycare center, then take the metro to the, uh, to the company, then return to pick up your kid, or you, your company to can, a big company to have a daycare center for those kids, then it's easier for you to be, you know, comfortable to work in, in the company. So that's all the challenge we face. We try to do these things, but anyway, for the past three years, except the last year, because the last year was a dragon year. For Chinese, the dragon year is, is abnormal. But uh, make a comparison of this next year to the year before, we do increase the number of the size. So it's helpful. And make a comparison to the rest of the metros in Taiwan. We are the number one. We are the number one in Taiwan. Yes. Really, uh, congratulations, Eric. Uh, in Japan, referring to one example of Japan, uh, all cities are suffering the shortage of infant, not infant, but also pre-kindergarten schools. Waiting lists are numerous. So all cities are competing, not infant school, but pre-kindergarten schools. And Yokohama City Mayor, together with Governor Kuroiwa, who visited you, your office, July 16th, 18th. Well, they strongly supported no waiting list in Yokohama City as a first city, but that's preschool, kindergarten school, not infant, and you are so much advanced. My question is, how could you inference or recommend Taichu, Tainan, or even Taipei City? Because your initiative is truly important. And France is the only country who overcome. I experienced my student life in Paris, but French government gave 20%, 30% of the salary when first baby is born, and even double second baby was born. It's not a subsidies. It's a donation of the matching of the salary. To that extent, federal government reacted. Beautifully recurve of the rate, birth, rate of birth. I think the government become, should become very serious for this Asian prosperity is depending upon new generations. And, but congratulations, but how could you influence the, uh, it's, it's a great experience and great achievement. My question is how could you influence these other cities as a leader of Taiwan? Thank you so much, Mr. Advisor, to, to the governor of uh, Kanagawa. Uh, as you know, in Taiwan, it's not a big country. It's a, it's a small world. Everything will be on the paper, on the media. So it's a strong competition among those cities. So at the beginning, when we start this project, uh, I think even the central government or the rest of the city will see it's too risky. It's too difficult. So uh, everybody wait and see. But a year after, after we got the 10 daycare center, it became a certain kind of fashion. Uh, everybody want to come to our daycare center to see what you have done. 
So today, I can give you the number. Totally in Taiwan, the daycare center now, including the city of Taipei, Taichung, Kaohsiung, etc., et totally together, 35 public owned daycare center. Of course, 20 of them in New Taipei, few of them in Taipei City, in Taichung, in Kaohsiung. I'm so happy it's became a policy, national wide policy. Thank you. Yes, please. Hi, my name is Yuhyun Park. I'm this year fellow from Korea. That means I am the youngest one in the room. <laughs> yes, I personally have a five and three years old boy and girl. And I know that, you know, uh, as a mom, to detach a kid of zero years old, have a, a, it takes a lot of courage. We need to have a confidence about this daycare, especially the parent, uh, the teacher's quality. Um, so, I, I heard that a lot of concerns about the young mom is whether the state care center can really take care of, of kids instead of myself. So how do you really quality control the teachers? I think this is a very systematic issue. And second question that I have is that um, in Korea, we also have a lot of uh, this, serious, this low fatality is serious issue. Here, I think the, the, our birth rate is even below one, 0 0.99 or something. And um, by survey, we say the more concern is about the education fee they will later to have, the economic burden, not just a, a younger kids for the, as they grow to the high schools and college. So is there any policy that you, you implement as a mayor um, to control this the education fee or other fees as they grow up? Thank you. Uh, first of all, first question is regarding to the quality or the quantity of the the the, per, the person, the people who who take care of the baby. Uh, so that's it's ver that that is very important. At the beginning, we try to collaborate with the university and the institutions. If they can uh, substantially to provide the graduate uh, students to join the system, and you can create a system of the, quali uh, the quantity and the quality for each center, then it will, will be okay. So the government will oversize whether each center follow the rule. For example, each center we have 22 staffs. 22 staffs including 15 teachers, we call teachers, and the seven uh, supplementary staffs. That's very important. Second one, everybody must with the license. They pass the exam, and uh, any annually we will double check, review their quality as a help as a teacher. Second one is regarding to you call the cost for the for living for the for high school and maybe for for university. Mainly in Taiwan, uh, maybe I don't know whether it's the, it's the same for public school. It's, the cost is relatively low. You know, in Taiwan, for before before college, it's almost uh, uh, tuition free for every student for public school. So uh, relatively, I think the cost is not so high. If if of course, if the parents will want the school want the student to st study abroad, I mean, it's mainly to United States to John Wolf's uh, country, then will be very expensive. It's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a comparison, I miss. Thank you very much, Mayor. I think we have to bring this session to a close. I think for those of you who are interested in uh, finding out more about New Taipei City and you know, the other end of the live spectrum, as Mayor said, about senior citizens, uh, do come to the public lecture tomorrow, uh, the Center for Livable Cities public lecture, which is at the Civil Service College. Uh, from 3 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, uh, and it's free, so you're, you're all welcome. So let us now thank uh, Mia Chu, I think, for a most inspiring talk about the future. <laughs> living, living.